Hi everybody, Coach Cliff here. I wanted to share with you a PowerPoint presentation that I put together getting ready for the marathon, half marathon, 5K racing season. Now, I don't know where you're listening to this, but I'm in Texas and it's hot down here. So we don't race much in the summertime. In fact, we don't do a whole lot in the summertime. Even at 5 o'clock in the morning, it can be 80, 85 degrees with 100% humidity. So most of our training is done early in the morning and we get ready for the fall or the winter racing season. But most marathons and half marathons are in the winter time or the fall time around the country so we're getting ready for it four to six months out from your first or any marathon or half marathon or 5k is plenty of time for you to run a successful and good marathon so now's the time to get started how do you build a program there's a lot of programs online they're all built on a coach's philosophy on what he's found success with his teams or whoever he's coached this is my philosophy and I hope you can at least grab something from this put into your program your training program and I hope it serves you Base mileage, let's talk about that. He, when, when I was younger and in college and running track in college, we were taught that during the summertime, because we would race in the fall time, and our championship season was in October, November, conference championship, national championships. So we would do base mileage all the way from June, July, and August. Usually the first two weeks in June were off because we'd get done with school and we'd just take it off, and then we'd start building up our base mileage again. Here's what I would prefer. That's great for a seasoned collegiate athlete or for a really good runner. If you have year-round to train, we don't have time for that. And it's not that it's wrong, but it's a little bit overrated and that you don't have to do that. So what I would prefer that you do is do it, but we'll do it during the interval time. So let's start intervals this week, which gets a little scary. I know you hear that and you think, okay, no, I want to spend about three months building base mileage. And the reason I think we think that is because base mileage is... Well, fun. You go out for a nice, easy run. You feel good. Intervals aren't fun. They're never fun. But this is what makes you good. And also, it's what makes your base mileage running or your easy runs or your marathon or your race easier because you've done the work now. So let's do the work now. And over a period of time, you'll learn to listen to your body. You'll learn to kind of work through that pain. And it becomes not so painful because you realize I'm getting faster. So let's start intervals now. 400 meters one mile repeats, and then the long run. Notice I call a long run a hard run because any time we do a workout that it takes a long time to recover from, which a long run does because there's a lot of trauma on your body, we treat it like a hard run. So three hard runs a week. How fast do we go? Well, we go as fast as we need to. Don't go too fast, but and I'll give you some ideas of how fast in, in the next slides. But we want to go hard on these. These are definitely faster than easy pace. So what my point is is that you want to change gears. You don't want to do these the same pace that you're doing your easy runs. Just because it's 400 meters, the reason it's 400 meters or a mile is because it's shorter, therefore we can go harder. It seems like it makes common sense, to, but to some people it doesn't. So you have to change gears. Now this is all relative on your own ability. If you're fast, run fast. If you're just starting, you may not be quite as fast, and that's okay. How often do you do intervals or hard runs? Three days a week. There's three interval days, or two interval days, and one long run day, so three hard days a week. How do you run? I'm going to cover this in future videos, but I just wanted to at least say right now, I don't know. We weren't taught to run when we were a kid. We just ran. And there's a lot of different philosophies now with the free running, and should we land on our toes or our balls of our feet or the mid midfoot or our heels? The answer to that for right now is just go run. You'll figure it out. Your body will run how it's intended to run. The other question I get is, how do you breathe? It's the same. I'll have the same answer. I'll get on talk about that in more depth in future videos. But just breathe. Your body also will figure out how to breathe rhythmically if you just allow it to go and don't tighten up or hesitate. Just breathe. Tuesday 400s doesn't have to be done on Tuesday. It just seems to be that Tuesday is the day that we do our shorter, faster intervals. I say we runners in general, but it doesn't have to be. Notice I put up there 400s, 600s, 800s. Okay, you 400s, and I'm going to use 400s as an example. Men like to do 400s. Women hate them. Women like to do 800s. Men hate them. I don't know what it is. A tolerance for pain? I have no idea. It just seems generally that that's kind of what it is. But we're going to use 400s for the example. Start with four 400 meters. Now I'm talking to beginner. If you've been do running for a while, you could start with six or eight, but Start with four, and I'm just giving using this in, as an example. At two minutes, some of you might be faster, some are going to be slower, and that's okay. 
there's going to be some people that are at three, three minutes, 30 seconds. There's other, there going to be other people that are running these in 60, 65 seconds. But let's just take two minutes for the example. Then use a one minute, 30 second rest. What do you do? Nothing. Stand. Bent over. I know. Your coach told you to not bend over. I don't really see a problem with that. Just <laughs> rest. Just stand there. In fact, if you even want to sit down, no, don't sit down. Walk around a little bit, but you're going to be bent over, breathing hard and heavy, and then walk around and get ready for the next one. Okay, start with four. Go go at whatever your pace is, and we'll talk about pacing in a second, but one minutes and 30 second rest for now. That's your first day. Build up over a period of time to 10 to 12. If you want to add one 400 meter per week every Tuesday or two, that's what you want to do. I would rather you start building your volume of 400s first before we do anything else. But you are going to go faster because you're getting better. So you'll find that if you were a two minute 400 meter runner, all of a sudden you're running these now at one minute 55 seconds automatically. It just happens. So you don't really have to focus on going faster. We don't have to set a limit. It's just going to happen. So as we build volume, you will go faster. Then we lower the rest periods, but do this after you build up the volume by 15 seconds at a time. So next week, we're going to do 10 400s at 1 minute and 45 seconds because you've built down to that level at 1 minute and 15 seconds. Now I'll tell you that lowering the rest period is the most grueling way, the most grueling variable to change. Anyone can do, let's say anyone, can do 10 400 meters at a good pace and if we rested for 5 to 10 minutes that wouldn't be too hard. You start lowering the rest period and that's what is that's what's difficult. Your pace should be at about 115 to 130 minutes faster than your race pace. What is race pace? Well, that's the pace that you run your race at. So whether it's a 5K, half marathon, marathon. So someone might say that my 5K pace is 9 minutes per mile. My half marathon pace is 10 minutes per mile. And my marathon pace is 11 minutes per mile. Okay, so if you know that, then you know how fast you should be doing your 400s. If you don't know that, either guess, in other words, for women, a marathon 11 to 12 minute pace, maybe 10 if you're a little bit more quick, and the half marathon somewhere around in that level too. A 5K might be a little bit faster. So we're just going to kind of start with those numbers. For a guy, it might be a little bit lower. So we want these to be, what well, your 400s are fast. I mean, you're, you're really moving on these. So it should be fast, but it shouldn't be absolutely killer, especially at the beginning. Discipline. Let me talk about this. I have never seen, I've seen very few, I'll say that, very few athletes who can go out and do track workouts on their own and be disciplined to do all of the intervals at the pace and keep steady with that rest because they're hard, they're grueling, they're no fun. We're almost ready to throw up sometimes, but they make us faster, they make us stronger, they make us better. And by the way, the health benefits from doing these is optimal health and bone mass density too. So these are so good in every way, shape, and form for you. But most people can't do these on their own. So find a partner, find a group, or have someone bike next to you if that's what you choose to do. And by the way, you don't have to do these 400, 600, 800s on a track. In fact, don't do them. I like to do them on a track because I know there's a start line, there's a finish line, and there's a 200 meter mark. I know exactly what's halfway. Or you could do these on the road. You could measure something out. You could get a measuring wheel. You could borrow one from the city. Or you could measure it with your bike if you have a bike computer or have a friend who has a bike computer measured out for you. Or do it in your car. And how do you know where those start and finish lines are? Well, I got a little secret. I use a can of spray paint. Don't use orange. Just use something that's a little bit discreet. Don't tell anyone I told you to do that. But that's what I do. Or put a pile of rocks or at least know where a signpost is or a tree where you know where that finish line is. So you can measure it out. And in a car, it's not going to be exact. Who cares? That's okay. For most of our purposes, if it's about 400 meters, we're using that energy system, and it's about that amount of time, we're fine. Thursday mile repeats. Now, you don't have to do mile repeats on Thursday. You can do them on Wednesday, or you can switch them to the, with the Tuesday. It just seems that athletes in general will do the longer interval workouts on Thursday because they're racing on Saturday. And it might not be that you're racing on Saturday, so it doesn't really matter. But just for our purposes, let's just say Thursday mile repeats. And kind of with anything else, it doesn't have to be mile repeats. It can be a one and a half mile or two mile or even up to three miles is fine to do. The point is, is that this uses a specific energy system. The 400 meter does a, a separate one. This one works a different energy system that will help build stamina in your body. So 
what you want to do is you want to go out and run two one mile repeats so you run one mile that you've measured out and don't do these on the track that's just boring you can if you want to but measure out a mile on the road and a good thing to do is to know where that half mile is and it's even better to know where the quarter mile splits are so you can kind of tell your pace so all of a sudden you don't finish at the end at nine minutes or, or ten minutes or eleven or whatever or maybe going way too fast so you run one mile at eight minutes per mile now this is assuming that your race pace is nine minutes per mile because we want to do it one minute faster than your race pace so eight minutes for that mile and then stop for three minutes you can stand you can walk you can jog if you start recovering a little bit three minutes is a long enough period of time that you could start moving some if you wanted to so you run one mile at eight minutes per mile rest for three minutes and then you do a second one workouts done with a warm-up and a cool down of course build up to four to five mile repeats now if you're training for the 5k three one mile repeats is all you need if you're doing the half marathon you will do four if you're doing a full marathon you can work up to five so higher volume lower intensity because your race pace is gonna be a little bit slower for the marathon so we can have more volume at a little bit lower intensity and then you just start automatically just like the 400s going faster now if your times are not getting faster then you need to make sure that you are going faster just a little bit at a time so it might be the first two three weeks you're doing it at eight minute per mile and then push for a 755 or a 750 and see what you can do your body should be improving at any age as you go leave these rest periods the three minutes we don't change that with the mile repeats I don't know why we just don't a mile is hard enough and long enough that you kinda need at least three minutes to rest alright your weekend long run treat this like a hard run the reason is is because it's long and your body goes through a lot of trauma and pounding and it needs time to recover from that so don't do these after the day after an interval run and don't do these do a long run the day before an interval run you don't want to do that to your body you need time to recover from a long run do this at the other end of your race pace the opposite side so one minute slower than your race pace so if your race pace is nine minutes per mile we're gonna do these at ten minutes per mile here's why what we want to do during this and this is what really makes the long run effective it's not an easy slogging slow enjoyable run well you can enjoy it of course but every two miles or so throw in a surge of a half to a mile that's closer to your race pace so we drop it down about a minute per mile and just hold that a little bit and try to feel what that that feeling is like or that speed is like and relate that to your race pace so you don't have to measure that out on a long run course don't go do that that's too much but just pick a tree out there or a ways down and say that's about a half mile away or I'm gonna go to this next corner that I know is about a mile away and just pick up the pace close to your race pace now if you have a fancy watch and you can tell what pace you're going that's great or if someone's biking alongside you with a bike computer they can tell you we're going this pace that's great too so but every once in a while and even if you don't have that measuring monitoring system doesn't matter just pick up the pace every once in a while do a little bit faster now here's one thing I want you to do when you get done with that half mile to a mile and you start slowing the pace down again try this and this is really hard to do slow down your pace but don't stop and walk slow down your pace and it takes about 30 to 45 seconds before your heart rate and your ventilation comes down to that next well recovery pace or at the slower pace it comes back down so you're gonna be still be going through that pain in your tire for 30 to 45 seconds and you it's like when we decide to slow down we just mentally shut down we'll try really hard just to slow the pace and not stop and walk because what it teaches you to do it teaches your body to keep going even when it's tired so if you elevated the pace too hard maybe you need to stop and walk but try to increase the pace a little bit and then slow down the pace and then just hold it and keep going through because within 30 to 45 seconds you'll be back down to that recovery pace a little bit this is what I want you to do is notice feel and learn that change of pace we can tell an elite athlete I want you to go out and run this quarter mile repeat at 63 seconds and without looking at their watch they without even looking at the 200 meter split they know exactly where they are and they'll come across that finish line at 63 seconds that's just after years of learning your body and what it feels like to run at that pace and they know what that number means to that feeling in their body so you learn that when you start noticing these changes so we start with three miles tomorrow or whenever you do your first long run if that's what you can do or how long can you run so if you say well I can go out and do a five or six mile run okay well then start there but here's what you do start with your on your calendar whatever marathon or half marathon or 5k you're doing put that on your calendar and go backwards and add one to two miles each week 
add a mile or two each week as you go or subtract a mile or two each week. So here's the marathon in your calendar. Let's go backwards. Let's subtract one to two miles depending on how much time you have. So we build that mileage. So it might be that you start at three miles and next week is four miles. The next week is five miles. Or maybe we jump up by two miles at a time depending on what you feel like you can do. So start with your marathon, work backwards, subtract some miles off there. And every weekend we just progress a little bit more and a little bit more. You can stop and drink during the run. Elite athletes typically won't, and that's okay. But if it's hot, it's warm, you might need to, and it's okay to do that. You can do a loop. You can measure out a two-mile or a five-mile or whatever kind of loop you want and do it once or twice or do the loop twice or a very small one and have drinks where you know you can run by your house or something like that. A lot of people will leave drinks out somewhere in the weeds along the run. They'll get up early and go put it out there. That's fine to do too. One thing I want you to do, if, if you're planning to stop at the water stops during a marathon or half marathon and walk and use that as a walk break, then you can stop and walk during your practice. That's okay. But if you're planning not to stop, then try to learn to drink while you're running, which is kind of an art, especially out of a cup. You know how to do that? Fold the cup, squeeze it, and then drink it, kind of suck it out of the side of your mouth. Oh, we can learn that some other time. But there's an art to doing that, running while you're drinking. All right. What do you do on the other days? So we've got three hard workout days, two interval days, and a long run day. The question is, shouldn't we just do nothing and rest? The answer is, you, well, you could, but the answer is no, because there are other physiological changes, positive changes, that happen in your body with an easy run. Number one is that you will recover more quickly from yesterday's hard run until tomorrow's hard run or interval run. You recover more so by doing an easy run. Number two is that our elasticity of our blood vessels, the capillarization, the increase in capillarization in our body, and the increase in mitochondrial density, that's the factor in our nucleus and our cells, will increase with an easy run more so than it does during interval training. So go out there and do those easy runs because they do count. Now let's say, for example, that you, or let's, let's jump to this. How far do we go? Three to seven miles. As a college athlete running five and 10K races, we never went more than seven or eight miles. You don't need to go further than that. That's plenty enough. If you feel like you can go further than that, yesterday's hard run should have been harder. If you feel like th four, three miles is way too much and that's you're exhausted with that, maybe yesterday was too hard or maybe you're just starting and need to get used to it too. So whatever you can do, the point is, is that you need to be able to recover through these runs. So how fast? Well, do it. Don't do it at a, at a slow slogging pace. Do it up-tempo or at a brisk pace. Does brisk mean, does that word mean something to you? I used to be able to say that to my athletes and say run this at a brisk pace and they knew exactly what kind of pace that meant. So it's up-tempo but it's not hard. You want to be able to recover through these runs. So why do intervals at all? Why not just go out and run three, four, five, six, seven miles a day? Because if you do that, you will get good at running three, four, five, six, seven miles at that pace, and that's all you'll get good at. You won't get any faster and you won't progress. So do the intervals. They're not fun, but they work. They're very, very important to do. And then leave the easy runs to the easy days so that you can recover. What about strength training? Strength training is great. I remember some athletes years and years ago when I was in college said, when the Kenyans start doing strength training, we'll do strength training too. And then we found out the Kenyans have been doing it for 10 years. We just didn't know it. So all of a sudden, Americans then started doing, distance runners started doing strength training. So the basic lifts, squats and deadlifts and glute, things for your glutes and your hamstrings are the best exercises that you can do. Don't spend a lot of time in the weight room because, you know, if you're running, you're training for a race, you're going to lose strength almost no matter what you do. And you're also going to lose some muscle mass. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Because strength training and distance running are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So know that you're going to lose some strength, but your body doesn't need that strength to run a race. So it's going to shed some of that strength and some of that muscle. That's okay. It's not a bad thing. If you want to be a runner, you look at the runners and, and Tour de France riders, those guys are skinny. But that's what they need. You, want it, you don't want to be carrying all that extra weight on your body. It doesn't mean that you can't get stronger and do strength training during it and have sufficient strength for what you do in life. What about cross training, like biking? Well, why not bike on an off day or an easy day? And that's okay to do. And if your purpose to do that is to build some opposite muscles so that you don't get injured, that's a good thing. But don't think that biking is going to make you a better runner. It doesn't. Let's take Lance Armstrong, for example. Lance was one of the greatest cyclists of all times in the Tour de France, won seven years in a row. An unbelievable cyclist. Several years ago, he went and did the New York City Marathon and trained for a year for it. And he ran a time that when I was running, well, when I was faster, he, I would have beaten him. But So he was a good runner, but he wasn't a great runner, but he was the greatest, one of the greatest cyclists of all time. 
So he trained for cycling for his entire life and that did not make him a great runner. So don't bike because it's going to make you a better runner. It won't. It, but if you want to do it for cross training purposes to reduce the risk of injury, not a bad idea to do. Or if you want to bike just because you want to bike, then go bike. But I just don't want, don't want you thinking that biking will make you a better runner. If you want to be a good runner, run. If you want to be a good biker, bike. All right, the big announcement. CollegeStationRunning.com. It's a brand new club that I just started, and I'm really, really excited about it. I've wanted to do this, and, but I wanted to wait until I had the time to do it right. It's a running club for everybody. It can be for someone who's never run a race or even ever run before in their life. Join us. You can walk. You can do a 5K. This isn't marathon training for elite runners. I don't want it to be that. But I know that there will be some, there are, I know some elite runners that will be out there. They're going to train with us too. I want it to be for everybody so that on Saturday mornings at 7.30 a.m. at Wolfpen, where, where we'll meet, I want to have a thousand runners out there that just join together and we all start off and run together and make it just a big, huge running community and have a lot of fun running on Saturday mornings together. So there is a free portion, which is the Saturday morning runs. And if you need more services, more help, you want to do the interval training with us, you want me to write a program for you, there are some paid parts to it too. So go to collegestationrunning.com and sign up for the free stuff. And sign up and come out there on Saturday morning. Bring all your friends. Bring everybody. You want to go for a run, 7.30 a.m., Saturday mornings at Wolfpen? That's where we're going to start. It kicks off August 13th. Go to collegestationrunning.com and sign up. It's going to be fun. I'm doing this because I want to support runners and teach you how to become your run to run your first 5K or to be a better runner or to run your fastest time ever. So I hope that this video helped some. If you don't join us and you're going to build your own program, I hope that this helps some, and I hope that this running club will help you as well. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks, and join us.